Hi everyone, DXD from Registech. Thanks for joining us for today's webinar, The Future of Making Design and Manufacturing. We will have Registech's Applications Engineer, John Pitcher, presenting for us. So just a quick introduction about Registech. So we're a leading provider of design technology and services to engineering and architecture professionals. With over 20 years of local experience, we provide the expertise, training and support to help companies realize the full potential of the design technology. The Registech mission is to deliver industry leading services to the engineering, construction and architecture communities. We work with clients and companies of any size nationally and abroad. Over to you, John. Thanks, Dexter, and hello, everyone. Thanks for joining in on today's webinar. Uh, John Pitcher here. I'm an application engineer with Redstack, focused mainly on uh, the design and manufacturing products that Autodesk have to offer. I also get a bit involved in the 3D printing side of things. Uh, so yeah, look, today we uh, hope to go through some aspects of the future of making, and uh, we've got an exciting program ahead. Just a bit of background on me, I commenced my career as a mechanical fitter tradesperson 30 or so years ago actually, um, and for 10 years of my employment I worked as a CAM engineer programming and managing CNC equipment. I've been working with Redstack and Imagina as we were called previously uh, for around 13 years now. Uh, the bulk of my time is spent with technical support and conducting training classes for our clients around Australia. So for the next 30 or 40 minutes, we're going to explore some of the emerging technologies that will change the future for all designers and manufacturers. There are many disruptive trends and changing processes that will affect the way we make things in the future. Manufacturers, regardless of their size or structure, will be forced to adopt new methodologies to survive in, a future, in, in the future world markets. Constant change and adaptivity will be needed to help create more from less, to produce more materials or more product with less, uh, less, less impact on our, our ever challenging environmental scenario. So just a quick summary of what we hope to cover in this webinar. As anyone who's involved in design and manufacturing will be aware, we're facing new challenges. In the past 20 or 30 years, we've seen a lot of major changes in design and manufacturing process. Our marketplace is evolving, whether we like it or not, and as new composite materials become available, lightweight materials with exceptional strength and wear resistance, many of our current components need to be re-engineered to take advantage of these new material offerings. After we've run through some of the above, there will be some uh, opportunity to, or you can email us afterwards and uh, we can certainly take some discussions with regard to how we move forward with some of these new products and materials on offer. So today there's over, over seven and a half billion human beings living on Earth. Um, and as you're probably aware, the global middle class is growing faster than at any other time in history. By 2020, experts tell us there will be around 10 billion of us living on this planet. Two thirds of us will live in cities. So quite a, a big impact and, and many changes. All of those people need means of communication and transportation. They need energy, food, houses, bridges, roads. They need products from refrigerators to cell phones. And of course, the growing population creates demand to produce all of these products. The current estimate is that there will be 3, 372,000 new products on offer every year for the foreseeable future. And so some major changes are happening in the world in which we live. More people and more people entering the middle class, more demand for buildings, products, transportation, communication. So whether we like it or not, more is inevitable. We don't have any control over how that will play out. But at the same time, we see shortages. And here's an example of, of a shortage of resource. Four out of 10 manufacturers, for instance, called the shortage of skilled workers as a major one of their top challenges. Aging populations in mature countries amplify that problem. Are we as efficient as we really believe? We're all wasting resources. And if you've ever built a house or done some home renovations, you've probably felt the pain. 30% of material is wasted in construction. But you believe there's no waste in manufacturing? 
Well, sadly, 70% of spare parts are never used. They sit in stock and are wasted. So it's not only a shortage of skilled labour and a waste of spare parts, space is, is obviously a constraint in cities. Traffic jams are just normal and obviously burn produ productivity and time for, for everyone. We've limited natural resources. For example, rare earth mineral, minerals are badly needed materials throughout the world to produce things like batteries for mobile phones or electric cars. And there's already conflicts about those particular materials. And the lifestyle of rapidly growing middle class will consume more energy, typically more than twice as much, which will deplete non-renewable non resources. So whether we look at it or not, less is a reality. So we can't continue as we are doing today. We need to produce more products to serve a growing population, but with less impact and negative impact on our planet. So we need to change some things and addressing the inevitability of having to do more along with the reality of doing it with less negative impact. It's a big challenge and of course with that challenge there comes big opportunities. So addressing this fundamental capacity issue is also the biggest manufacturing and designing opportunity that we've ever had. So it's up to us to turn a challenge into an opportunity. And that leads to the opportunity, the opportunity of better. We can use automation technologies to make things better. We can use better means of making them and we can make more meaningful work in the process. Better things, things that fit their purpose better, more customized to their users, products which are configured to match the expectation of the customer, products that are durable, easier to repair, and what's more, they need to be recyclable. Off-the-shelf products no longer fit our needs or our desires. Mass production has given way to mass customization, and the digital world is now integrated into physical products. The things we make today contain sensors, and software, microprocessors, and media. They are more connected and more intelligent than ever before. And that allows us to add new business models to traditional hardware products. It's an opportunity to create things that are more meaningful. How do we make those things? Well, we're make, capable of making products of increasing fidelity and complexity, but product but production, producing highly configurable products, profitability needs to be highly flexible in manufacturing. At the same time, the things we make are no longer constrained by the physical process of making. As we said before, new materials and manufacturing technologies like additive manufacturing and hybrid manufacturing, the combination of additive and traditional machining, allow us to produce small volumes of highly complex products. Utilising machines to the maximum capacity is essential, like leveraging five-axis machines, not just simple three-axis machines. Or taking advantage of modern robots and uh, the flexibility that they can provide. Not just using them to perform one task over and over and again and again. Automation of traditionally manual processes will play an essential role in making things better in the future. Now there's an opportunity to make things of increasing value, things that are more profitable, perform better and last longer. And that will change the way we as designers and production engineers will work. Engineers will no longer use tools to just document their ideas. In fact, that's been happening for the last 100 years or so on wooden drawing boards and in 2D and to some degree more recently in the 3D design world. With resource shortages of demand for more products and increasing product complexity, old ways of working are not enough. We face too many bottlenecks. Engineers and production designers need to leverage automation to reduce lower or to produce lower value tasks so they can focus on higher order value added tasks. They will leverage the computation power of the cloud through generative design to automatically explore designs and automate more future tasks. 
connecting engineering with manufacturing with the data at the center breaks down islands of information and enables a digital transformation. Engineers can focus on their most valuable tasks. So automation gives an opportunity to create more meaningful work. Let's look at some examples for each of these, uh, these new startup that, that we see emerging in the world. So some of these types of things. I'd like to explain to you a company called A-Safe, a company which is in the business of safety equipment, like safety rails, as you can see. So what can be smart and connected about a safety rail? They're basically steel profiles that are welded or bolted together, or they were. A commodity business with a, a low margin, but a highly competitive pressure. So what did A-Safe do? Well, A-Safe reinvented safety. First, the barrier is flexible not rigid, it doesn't break or deform immediately, it bends. Second, the barrier is equipped with sensors which measure impact. That means the barrier is capable of telling if it needs replacement. That reduces or even eliminates inspection cycles and wasted time. But that's not all. Having smart safety barriers in an entire factor of, or area of a, of a warehouse gives customers insight. Insight into areas with more incidents, perhaps a speeding forklift driver who may need more training, and also it reduces the risk for critical equipment. ASAFE can offer those insights as additional services on top of traditional hardware. So they separated themselves in a very competitive market and grew their business by over 300%. That's a massive change, isn't it? 300%. Let's move on to the process of making or production. This is how a production facility might look, CNC machines, maybe even robots and automation. So are we there already? Well, automation has been out there since the 60s and 70s. How is automation different in those days? Automation as we know it, traditionally used to automate well understood and repetitive tasks. But when something unexpected happened, it stopped and you needed to react reprogram and create another option. It became, a, it became quite complex pretty quickly. Now we're moving to a world with smart closed loop manufacturing, where the process adjusts automatically based on the situation and where several manufacturing processes are executed without manual in interaction or transportation from one situation or from one workstation to the next. So here's an example, and this shows us the repair of a, a power generator turbine blade. First the machine needs to cut the damaged area. That's pretty straightforward. Could do that on a three axis machining center. This is where it gets increasingly complex. The same machine is capable of adding material in a process called laser cladding. No human interaction, no machine transport, transportation to another machine. But laser cladding is not an exact science. The material is applied and you never know where exactly the material is. Therefore, the next step is about understanding the shape of the area with the added material. Again, the same machine now uses a simple probe to measure the surface. And the next step is about finishing the repaired area with an adjusted CNC program, adjusted to the actual reality of the repaired areas. And the final step is polishing. Talking about polishing, polishing is traditionally or typically a very manual process, not good in a, in a time of resource shortage. And who wants to do that kind of a job in the future? We talked about robots earlier and the opportunity to leverage flexible robots. If we could use robots, not with teaching, but with proper programming, they will become very flexible workers. They will never get bored or tired of doing the same job again and again. And so what's the result here? Well, a repaired turbine blade is 50% less expensive than producing a new blade. So how will that change the way we as engineers work in the coming world? Well, as I said, engineers are used to documenting their ideas. They start with experience and existing designs. Nothing has changed here in the last 100 years. Well, the technology changed and with that, so has the opportunity. Imagine this component, a part of a crimping device used um, by overhead power electricians working on power lines. You can imagine every gram 
reduction in weight matters. You could do it the traditional way, or you could use the computation power of the cloud to explore options and alternatives based on your problem definition. That enables engineers to leverage their valuable time to select and validate the right solution from the many alternatives that are available. And the result speaks for itself. Using generative design, this team reduced the weight of this particular crimping device by one and a half kilograms, or 60%. So you can see the smile on his face. He's happy about that result. Let's talk about an industry where weight plays an increasingly important role, the automotive industry. The things General Motors make have changed a lot over the last 100 years, and so has the way that we manufacture them. General Motors has used automation to optimise their production in many areas of their facilities. They automate to the point where today a car rolls off the assembly line about every minute. Every car typically contains over 30,000 parts. So by optimising production, it's no longer enough to keep pace with the rapidly changing automotive industry. GM is reinventing itself by reimagining its business around electric. The company has committed to bring 20 electric vehicles to the market by the year 2023. But an electric vehicle comes with a whole new set of challenges. There's conflicting considerations, mileage and battery weight, safety and lightweight, customer experience and affordability. The best way to solve those conflicts is to break with traditional workflows. They don't give us good enough solutions. Let's focus on complexity and lightweight as an example. GM is using Autodesk generative design technology to help them reduce the number of parts that go into each car while making them lighter and stronger. Generative design tools allowed GM's engineers to develop solutions based on the goals and constraints of a part, like where it connects to the other parts, what is it made of, and what loads it needs to actually take when it's in production. So GM worked with Autodesk to explore a digital prototype for this particular part, the bracket where the rear seat belts fasten to the, uh, the chassis or the, the, the body of the car. Based on the goals and constraints and the def definition, generative design automatically generated viable design options for GM to choose, taking into account performance and manufacturing viability. Many design options, not just one, optimised design based on existing design constraints which meant that GM's engineers were able to explore dozens and dozens of valid design alternatives, faster than they would have been able to previously for a single design. From all the options available, this was the one that the engineers decided upon, a solution that would be pretty impossible for a human being to, to design, but a human did using generative design. A solution that GM has designed would be 40% lighter and 20% stronger than the original part. A solution that would be pretty impossible to be able to generate in our 2D or even our 3D world just a couple of years ago. Not that this is a, but this is a, a simple printed single part rather than an assembled item from eight separate components. Automation through generative design is enabling GM to make parts that are more lightweight and more fuel efficient but less components also means less complexity and a less complex and less expensive supply chain and a more efficient production process. Automation is not just changing the parts that General Motors makes, it's changing their vehicles, their supply chain and the production processes that run their entire ecosystem. So GM is focused on innovation and that has helped them create this particular bracket in a much more proficient manner. But that's just one component. Imagine if they applied that to the rest of the 30,000 components involved in each car. So the automotive industry is going to undergo some major changes and the types of design and manufacturing in the coming years. And that is a clear differ differentiation from GM. How can you differentiate yourself in today's changing market? How can you be prepared for and be successful in future markets? 
and how can you leverage all of those technologies to get ahead of your competition. Let's take another quick example of a generative design and how that we can visualize great benefit by reducing weight and waste and production time. Take a fairly traditional clevis, the fixture that a hydraulic ram would fit to for the boom arm of an excavator. Currently, this would most likely be fabricated from a few pieces of bar stock, then welded and or bolted together. It looks a fairly typical and relatively straightforward part to design engineer. If we were to make this part from mild steel or stainless steel, the weight would equal around one and a half kilos. But when we apply generative design tool to this clevis, this is how the process takes shape. First up, we set up a design study initially where we can determine our parameters and any obstacles that may have impact on the final geometry. Once we've established the parameters, we run the study and Inventor's generative design tool takes into account all these parameters and produces numerous iterations that match the criteria specified. So here's the outcome that generative design produced. And as the designer at this point, we can explore which iteration would best suit our particular form and function. You can see how varied the options are that the generative design tool created. So we settled for one particular design and uh, as you can see here, we've got an example of a part that was printed on Redstack Smart Forge Metal X printer. More than happy to talk about those with you and Dex would have some information on that to share if you'd like to get in touch with us afterwards. The final weight of this part, as you can see on the screen there, was 640 grams. So a weight saving of about 60% compared to the traditional one that was made from bar stock. Now that mightn't sound like a big saving, but if you applied this method to the entire boom arm, you could make and save a whole lot more weight and, and move a whole lot more product with the same or with less energy than was originally required. So there's numerous other savings obviously as well in engineering this part and exploring the alternatives. In 2D CAD or even 3D to some degree, um, for us to explore these alternatives would have been totally impractical and be far too time consuming. So we can use Autodesk software to create and validate various design changes and many other options within our design world. We can create more innovative and higher performing products in a much quicker time frame. So Autodesk products provide you with a platform that spans from design and engineering to documentation and manufacturing. It gets you to a higher efficiency by automating your design and engineering processes based on engineering rules to accelerate design with specialized modules like frame generator, routing and piping, and managing data and processes throughout the design scenario. It gives you next generation methods like generative design at your fingertips. It allows you to start a, dig a digital transformation and break down those islands of information as we saw earlier. And we can work on the same data in engineering scenarios with the manufacturing team to reduce risk, to reduce waste, and to make products more efficiently. So we could machine, cut, and turn using the right data. We can nest and prepare and update the CNC code if engineering data changes. And you can plan your factories and simulate the processes before you draw the first line. We can optimize our layout and make sure you eliminate risk by getting building and reality of existing factories into our digital factory model. It helps us to establish true collaboration within and beyond the firewall involving the supply chain. And finally, it reduces the effort of working in an environment where we can share information. We can link information across all aspects of manufacturing instead of using traditional and other formats which reduces rework and, and the time involved in projects. A platform which allows you to digitally transform your company and eliminate broken workflows. We deliver all this as part of the product design manufacturing collection. So we're not stopping there. You might have heard of Autodesk's Brick, brick Bot project. Um, and what's so special about that? Well, first of all, it's still in research, but it takes machine learning to the next level. Everybody talks about AI and machine learning, 
but here is a very practical example. Take a look at that robot. It picks up the bricks and positions them. It seems this is a little bit complex, but somehow a doable automation task. So imagine, or the image recognition software and programming all that, and the potential alternatives, it seems doable, but very time consuming to program, right? Well, long and complex setup times to simulation where robots are not used for small volume production, even though that's where manufacturers could benefit from greater agility. Did you see the robot pushing those bricks aside to get access to the ones it needed to pick up? Well, that robot wasn't actually programmed to do that. It learned it. The team virtually threw, Lego brick, threw those Lego bricks into a virtual environment at a virtual robot. They piled up all kinds of situations and then the robot tried to pick up the bricks again and again. But not just one at a time, it did it several times and not just four, 12 or 48 times, literally thousands and thousands of times. So with that, we need to enable all of you with the flexibility needed for developing breakthrough products and not just designing and engineering those products, we enabled you to manufacture them and close the loop between design and manufacturing. And we do this by giving you, our customers, the best tools in the world. And that sets you up for the future, to make more of what's needed by your company, to do it with less impact on the planet and to seize the opportunity wherever possible, where perhaps more so than before. And so what we see is we need to make more from less. So that pretty much wraps it up for today's webinar. I hope what you've seen is of interest. And um, as you can see, the details on the screen there, please get in touch. Uh, we'd love to talk further about these various aspects of Autodesk's tools to you. So I'll hand over to you now, Dexter, if you'd like to uh, take, take back control. Thanks again for joining us on today's webinar, everyone. If you have any more questions, you can contact us via email at solutions.com.au. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye for now.